Hello, it's Koi, and welcome to the Eclectic Cottage. Sitting here at the art room desk this morning and feeling really inspired by this colorful little children's book that I found while I was out thrifting called uh, The Hello Goodbye Window. And I think it's the bright, cheery colors that are um, capturing, you know, that captured my attention and made me bring it home. I'm seeing that there's a big glare on the book from my overhead light. Well, I'll have to go as quick as possible. I don't think that I'm going to make a project with it right this minute, but I did want to, to um, flip through the book with you before I start cutting into it. Um, look how gorgeous these are. Look at Poppy and his... I guess it could be Abuelo. It's going to be Abuelo if it goes into the Mexican journal. And I think this is the page that originally inspired me. Look at that night sky. Look at those colors. And look at that house. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but I do know that I'm going to make something to put into my colorful... Um, Mexican style journal. Oh, look how cute she is. Maybe I'll learn a few new Spanish words along the way. This is not necessarily written in Spanish, and it's not necessarily about a Spanish family, but they're going to be Spanish in my book. I'm going to make my own little adventure. Look at that house. Is that Casa Grande? Casa Grande. And the little girl with with a harmonica. Okay, the book is The Hello Goodbye Window by Norton Juster and Chris Rashka. If you happen to run across it, you might want to pick it up. Okay, I'm back at my desk with the Hello Goodbye Window inspiration uh, book. And what I've done so far is I've removed the pages from the book that um, inspired me the most. And guess what? It's every single one. <laughs> so all that I'm left with is this book cover that if you were looking to make a really big book, how big is this? This is 10 by 11. So if you were looking to make a really large book, this might make a nice cover for a big journal. It would be big. Anyway, that's not what's happening right now. Um, what, I, what I've done so far is I've taken, this is a little um, pattern that I have so that I can see what it is I'm cutting. And I just took the, the pattern and laid it over the, um, these four images. And that would, this is the, this is eight and a half by five and a half, which is the same size as a, journal page. So I know that the images that I choose can't be larger than that. That's the very largest they could be. So I've cut them out that size and I'm going to trim them down. And I think what I'm going to do somehow is take these four images, the nighttime ones, and these are the daytime ones, and I'm going to put them together somehow we have to trim them down but I'm going to put them together and then make some tags and such <clears throat> with Spanish words um, make tags and such out of the rest of these to create my own little Mexican story to slip inside my journal this is, I'm calling this Casa Grande. 
This is the daytime. This is the daytime Casa Grande. Nighttime Casa Grande. Okay, I'm back with Casa Grande, this Casa Grande uh, project. I've decided that I definitely want to work on it. It's cute. It's got my attention. I was going to put it off for a few days, but I'm going to go ahead and do it now. I think what I've decided to do is I'm going to make a little mini journal, a little mini book to fit inside my journal. I have trimmed the pages down a little bit. Um, so they should fit inside the journal okay. Let me just make sure. Yep, I'm gonna make a little book and just gonna clip it to the top of a page. As an extra little insert. And I've added, it, so there'll be three pages. This'll be, I'm gonna glue these together on three sides, make a pocket here. So that'll be one page, front and back. And this'll be the middle page, front and back. And this will be the third page, the last page, front and back. And the middle page I'm going to use, I'm going to actually make the pocket, I think, at the top on this middle page and put a huge tag in there that pays homage to the original um, storyline. Okay, the Hello Goodbye Window, story by Norton Juster, pictures by Chris uh, Rashka. Um, you know, to give homage to the artist that created the, the book. But in the rest of it, I'm going to create my own little, um, my own little story. On these pages, I'm going to collage some of the images. All right. Um... Maybe her riding her bicycle. I ride my bike. Her she here she's collecting acorns. Wonder if this fits. Okay. Does that fit? It's a possibility, so maybe, maybe that. But probably not, because I want to use these two. So this one's, we're going to be forfeiting that image. All right, so those two are probably definite. I could use this, unless I end up use, wanting to use it on the tag that goes inside. Um... This is Grandpa spraying her with a garden hose. That's kind of cute. Let's use that. That's cute. Or... That. That would take up a whole, a whole side. going to be inside the house. Find something else that she's doing outside of the house. It's inside. Okay.
Oh, that's really cute. Okay, we're going to use this for one side. We want to get the coffee cup in there or the whole cloud. I think the coffee cup. All right, it, Grandpa doesn't fit. It'll just be her looking at Grandma through the window. Sorry, Grandpa. Abuelo. creating some very colorful little scraps here. Maybe we'll make something fun with scrappies afterwards. So that's the largest it can be. We're gonna probably scale it down to fit the size of the others. And up getting rid of the pizza guy and the Queen of England if we use this huggy picture and we wanted the bicycle the collecting acorns those two are probably enough but that and that and this will go on a tag inside the journal in one of the pockets. Not really gonna fussy cut, but I am going to. What do they call this kiss cut?
see if I can make this one a little bit smaller so they both fit on the page. Okay, um, so those two will be there. Do we want to add some sky and flowers? We could. What else we got? Okay. Whether you all know it or not, you just had a major fall. The clamp that holds my my phone above my desk came unclamped from the desk and the phone went falling. Hopefully I'll be able to edit that out. I haven't done much with editing yet, but hopefully I'll be able to remove that. If not, I'm gonna apologize now for the um, the falling effect that you're going to uh, run across. Okay, I did a little distressing. Here's what I here's what I figured. I'm going to do some collaging. I like that little flower. Do some collaging onto the page. I'm going to add her here. And add her again down here. I did a little distressing. And note to self, I need to either remove these from my desk so I'm not tempted to use them, or I need to go find the, I have replacement sponges for this. I'll go, go get the replacement sponges so I can use them for the different colors because sitting right there, I'm tempted to use them. And when I'm using this brush, this brush obviously was not intended to do the edges with. This was intended to, you know, to um, to do a background. You gotta use the right tools for the job or else you kind of make a mess. Anyway, I think it's okay, but I don't, I'm, I'm really not happy with the way it turned out. All right, so let's, collage on the background first and for the lack of a better word to call it I'm going to call it I'm going to use the top down method again Barbara by Barbara from 49 dragonflies is where I remember hearing or seeing the idea first I may not do it exactly like her I haven't gone back to look but since I saw her video, ah, oh, ages ago. This is how I've been doing my collages. I kind of make everything a one piece unit first. And I don't know why she called it the top down, but this is how I do it. You're welcome to go check her out, maybe type in 49 dragonflies top down method to get a better idea, but this is what I do. I make my collage a one piece unit so that's easier to deal with. Then what I wanna do is cut it down to a size that's going to fit on my page. I can trim that later. I just want to get this big stuff off.
All right. <clears throat> and then I can get in there. and glue things down a little bit better. I don't want to glue on that page. Add it to the page. Again, I'm out of my um, my Avery glue stick. I'm using this Elmer's Craft Extra Strength uh, Craft Bond because it's what I have on hand. The bicycle girl takes up most of the bottom. Ride your bike and collect your acorns. Here on our collage. Let's put her back a little bit so she has some place to ride the bike to. Okay. That's that. This is this. Okay, that's cute. Clean up our edges a little bit. And that'll be pocket. That will be the front or the back of the pocket. And then we were going to use this one for the other side. It will have to be trimmed down a little bit. I wanted to keep the cup of coffee. So we may end up losing a little bit of grandma's hair. I don't know.
it doesn't matter which side we use. I didn't, I guess, I guess I could have just used some regular old copy paper if I was going to cover the whole thing. Oh, this is the empty glue. I thought more of the background, this blue background, would be showing. That's why I used a bright, vivid color. All right, I do want the coffee cup. I don't know why, but I do want the coffee cup. Smooth everything out. Let's clean up our edges. that holds my phone my phone above my desk is just clips onto the side of the desk it's been there for years and I never ever 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 thought about needing to check to see if it was still tight it's getting used obviously a little bit more the last couple weeks um, than it ever has before I think she's adorable. This will go together. It'll make a pocket. This one's going to open up from the top. And again, the tag that I put inside is going to pay homage to the actual artist of the original book. And the rest, I'm going to make tags. To stuff inside the, to stuff inside the um, the pockets. Okay, I've narrowed it down a little bit to some of the images I plan to use. Look at Grandpa chasing her with a water hose. That's funny, and her being an artist or maybe a journaler. This is the one that I'm going to make to the tag that I'm going to make to go in the middle pocket, which will pay. Again, homage to the original artist, which is the story by Norton Juster, the pictures by Chris Rashka, and this gives the copyright and everything. Now, this is under copyright, so I couldn't make copies of this, but I can use it in my personal journal because I own the book. but everything, the pictures and the text are under copyright and rightfully so. It's a really cute story and the art is just so cute. Of course, it's under copyright. This, I'm gonna back probably some of the tags just with another image like that. This one and this one will probably be one tag, a front and a back. 
Look at her. We'll use this one. This paper is so thick and so nice. This one is actually mom and dad coming to pick her up from grandma and grandpa's house. Abuela and abuelo, right? Is that is that what you call grandma and grandpa in, in Spanish? And here they are. This is abuela. Watching abuelo spray her with the water. And here's grandpa or abuela, abuelo, playing his harmonica. And this is her listening, so maybe these two should go together. All right. Um, <clears throat> I think we're going to save this for tomorrow, this part for tomorrow. Uh, what I also did end up with here is a ton of really cute, colorful scraps. Look at that. If I don't use these scraps in this book, in this journal, I'm never going to because it's just not my style really to use all these bright, vivid colors. Although I'm really love, I'm love, love, loving them. Um, <clears throat> maybe I can make some master boards. I don't know. If any of you have ideas on what to do with all these really colorful, cute scraps, let me know in the comments below. And I will show you that one thing that I do with my scraps, and it's something I always do when I have these skinny strips, that I'm not going to say they're not good for anything because they are. If you're if you're doing um, if you're using windowed windowed junk mail envelopes, they do sometimes come in handy to trim around the around the window and such, but. I usually just have a habit, sometimes when I first come in in the mornings into the art room, of just gluing the scraps like this, these skinny pieces together. And <clears throat> I don't usually use art glitter glue. <laughs> but anyway, I glue them together and I'm not gonna do them all right now, but I'm just gonna give you an idea and I make paper dangles out of them. Sometimes this just lets me think. It gives me a uh, time where I don't have to think about the project that I'm doing and I can think about what's coming next or thinking about how to get my day started. I usually use a glue stick, not art glitter glue. But for demonstration purposes, to make this quick and snappy. This one was probably big enough to use for something else. But it is going to become a dangle. I didn't come up with this. No, 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 no. We're all sharing thoughts and ideas for, you know, of things that people have been doing for throughout the ages. How long have people been scrapbooking? For decades upon decades, if not centuries, people have been scrapbooking, gluing things down and collecting ephemera. I guess the the um, <clears throat> definition of ephemera is ephemera is things that were intended to. Alexa, what's the definition of ephemera? Things that were intended to just. The noun, ephemera, can have a few meanings. Alexa, stop. Yeah. Alexa, stop. <laughs> she's really smart, really great, except when she's not. But ephemera is made to out of things that were only intended to last for a little while. A bus ticket, a, a receipt, a, a tag, a birthday card. Okay. And then I pulled out my little box of paper dangles and I'll show you what they look like.
You just glue them together, cut them down, put a little hole in them, and then I use, I can use a bulb pen to hang them from something. I use them a lot <laughs> when I'm sending out happy mail because they're cute. Just trim them up. Cut them down. Rachel the Corners. Hi, Rachel, Roxy Creations. I know she's not watching, but I got my corner trimming habit from her. I think here's some from earlier. And the hole can be in different positions here. Okay, I'll trim down the corners and throw them in the box and That's a way to bust this one way to bust the scraps. If you can think of other ways for me to use all of this beautiful, colorful scraps, anything besides, I'm going to definitely probably going to make um, a couple master boards to use for tags and such. I don't know if I'll actually use them, but I'll make them and maybe I can use them somewhere else down the line. Okay, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate all of you for being here with me. And I'm sorry again for the fall. Hopefully I'll be able to edit that fall out so you don't have to tumble to the ground with my camera, my phone, it's my iPhone. And I'm gonna say thank you again for those of you who have taken your time to watch my video, watch the videos, to like the videos, to leave comments. It's really fun to read to read your comments. And if you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to say goodbye for now, and I'll see you real soon.